How will the Saints respond to heartbreak yet again? It's the coach. It's the first of two this Monday night on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll see the New Orleans Saints trying to put the sting of last year's NFC Championship game no call behind them as they play host to a preseason favorite in the AFC South, the Houston Texans. I'll look back to opening weekend at halftime, but now it's off to Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Standing by, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. EA Sports coverage of the NFL has us in downtown New Orleans at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. The setting in this dome just serves to amplify the excitement of the folks in New Orleans as their Saints burst from the tunnel a moment ago. They're set, and we're set as well as the Saints get ready to do battle with the Houston Texans. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden, and Charles, a new season finally here. We had the great one Thursday night. All sorts of intrigue in the games yesterday, and now we put a bow on this first weekend with a good one here tonight. We do put a spotlight on key games, don't we? Even key nights. Thursday night has become a spotlight night. How about Sunday night? But there still is some magic to playing on Monday night, and these two teams are feeling it. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And here come the Saints for their opening drive. They'll be led out by the first pick of the second round back in 2001, and that's the veteran Drew Brees. Drew Brees' accomplishments have been borderline astounding. When you look back at what people thought about him coming out of college, so-called height issue, you name it, he can do it. And boy, does he prepare well for each and every game. First down, Breeze. And Cook has it left side. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. That pass play wound up for negative yardage. So here's second and 11. This is Alvin Kamara who made the Pro Bowl in each of his first two NFL seasons. They get nine yards back on the run there. And they're left with a much more makeable third and two. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. So opening drive, three straight runs, unable to pick up the first. I know the fans want to see first downs, but guess what? The coaches have reasons for what they're doing. Sometimes they've scripted it, and some of these runs, while they haven't been successful now, they may be successful later on. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. Watson will bring up the Texans here, first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Now a first-time Pro Bowler from a year ago, Lamar Miller. And he'll be upended after a gain of five, up to the 25-yard line. And let's look here at the Houston offense. Have no idea where they're putting in the food in the Martin household, but they've developed two terrific offensive linemen. Brother Zach, a perennial all-pro at guard with the Dallas Cowboys, but Nick, no slouch at center for the Houston Texans. He sets the tone for their offensive line. He's the pivot up front. Here's a second and five now from the 25. Now it's Watson. That complete to Lamar Miller. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. 
It's a first down on a gain of 10. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Out of the gun, Watson. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. And now a look at the Saints starting defense. Linebacker Demario Davis made the move from the New York Jets to the New Orleans Saints before the 2018 season, and that move really paid off for him. Always a terrific player. Now he was able to get to the playoffs for the first time in his NFL career. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Let's go, deep Throwing again is Watson. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Now this is just the fifth all-time meeting between the Texans and Saints here taking place in week one. And they have split the previous four meetings. Of course, the Texans entering the league in 2002. But you would think that these two teams would have met more because the cities are only separated by 350 miles, I-10 connecting them. In fact, for New Orleans, Houston is the closest NFL city of any in the league. So it's kind of interesting that this is only the fifth time that they have met. The last time they got together, November of 2015, the Texans winning that one 24-6. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. And on the first drive, three and out. I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Now a first down carry, it's Kamara. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A gain there of 21 yards. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 48-yard line. Breeze now to throw. Oh, look at Thomas wide open. Touchdown, New Orleans. Michael Thomas, 48 yards. As his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions, and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-uh, look out. <laughs> that was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Now comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. They were forced to punt on their initial drive of the new season. Now they're ready to go as they begin again with a first and 10. Eluding the pressure right. He's letting this one go for Fuller. And that is incomplete. Showed off the arm strength there, but to no avail. Second down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Watson going to give this one to Miller. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Coming in, he really liked his chance of having a big year based on a terrific offseason. And runs like that on opening weekend show that he's right. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. To throw is Watson. And this one grabbed by Darren Fells. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. It's our time. It's our time. A first down carry now for Miller. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. Ready for the second quarter, and it's our visitors with the football. As they've got it with a second and four coming up. Texans football to start quarter two. As they've got it with a second and four coming up. Miller. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. 
So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. It's almost a tendency breaker. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. DeAndre Hopkins, the pro bowler, the intended receiver, and it's second down. Play action for Miller. Now Watson. And this would complete to Will Fuller. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 17-yard line. I think it all came together there in breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. The Texans with the first opportunity now from the red zone. They've got a first and 10 at the 17. Back to throw, Watson. Oh, that was dangerous. Throw it into coverage, almost picked. But instead, they'll keep it on second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to... And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. From 17 yards out, as they are now on the board here in the first half. And there you go, nothing really too complex. Block, keep to your assignments, got to run it in, they did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking, beats good tackling on that play, and result, touchdown. So a nice drive put together there. They go 75 yards in nine plays. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. And Lamar Miller caps it off with a touchdown run. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. This not the final game of this opening weekend. Still one more, and that comes your way later tonight out in Oakland. The Denver Broncos and Vic Fangio's coaching debut taking on the Oakland Raiders, the final home opener for the Silver and Black in the East Bay. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here, first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Off the play fake to Kamara, it's Breeze. Blitz coming and down he goes. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Throwing on second and long. Breeze. Matthews, the intended target, third down here. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, when the 10 Ginn's going to go. He's at the 40, 20, touchdown, New Orleans. Ted Ginn, 84 yards. And the Saints have taken the lead. Well, that's a heck of a response to regain the lead after we had seen the touchdown to tie the game. I would say what we just saw there was a great amount of poise because typically when teams tie the game up, it's a little bit of a, how would you say, you kind of kind of take a step back and have to get yourself regrouped. They regrouped in a hurry, didn't they? They attacked back after they'd been tied. And in a big way, that was a statement-long touchdown. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. They trail a one-score deficit, 14-7, as they come up first and 10. A first down run, good for about three. Second and seven coming up. Tackle there going to Marshawn Lattimore. On second down, it's Miller. And this will go for five up to the 33. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. They'll try to run for it with Miller. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. And they have the first down with that gain of four yards. Well, partner, none of these runs individually have added up to a whole lot. Now, three plays, all three short runs, but together, a first down. Yeah, it's amazing how the narrative changes when you string them together. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield, incomplete. 
One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly, just sending the guy downfield with the in route accompanying it. What people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. We've hit the two minute mark of the second quarter, 14 to seven. And we remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll hand things off to the coach, Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have a look back at a very intriguing opening weekend in the NFL. Oh, a battle for it here, and this will be caught. That's back-to-back -back plays of over 20 yards. From the red zone now, Watson, and yeah, that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. Kayvon Webster on the defensive side able to get a hand in. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They see. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. A 16-yard touchdown as they are an extra point away now from tying this football game. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. Fairbairn good with the extra point. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. So step off the five yards. Yeah, partner, you know, defensive end, he wants to get into the offensive backfield. He wants that get off to be as fast as possible. A little too quick on that one. So this helps to start a drive. After the penalty, it'll be first and five. Here's Breeze to throw. Throw left side complete. It's Cook. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight that moves the chains. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Throwing now is Breeze. Bernardrick McKinney muscled his way in for the sack. Well, that's the second time he's been sacked so far in the first half. And if they have designs on having a big year, on going anywhere, they've got to find a way to keep him upright so he can throw the football. Another try after the first down sack. Breeze, that's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play. One-on-one -on -one matchup with someone trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. Throwing on first down is Breeze. And this one caught along the sideline, but they say already out of bounds. Now the throw didn't give him a chance to turn it upfield, and that brings up second down. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. And again, they'll throw with Breeze. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Cook. And this offense going to elect to burn a timeout with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. So we're at halftime of the first of two here on this opening Monday night of 2019. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in a minute. But first, 
Time to give the folks at home a look at what's going on around the NFL. We'll begin up at Bank of America Stadium in Uptown Charlotte, where you see the final score there. 27-13 was the final. From there, we head all the way out west to see what's happening with the L.A. Chargers. And they fall in that one to the visiting Indianapolis Colts. Andrew Luck with three touchdown passes in the week one victory. Lastly, let's get to the Windy City. See what's happening with the Bears at home at Soldier Field. And they were losers in that one to the visiting Green Bay Packers. Aaron Rodgers, four touchdown passes in the victory. In our game, it was the right arm of Drew Brees that led the way in the first half. He's thrown for close to 200 yards already, and that's helped propel his guys into the lead as we send you back to Brandon Godden. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. But we'll see if week one fatigue becomes any kind of a factor as we are back underway in the second half. Now a hit and a loose football. And this is picked up by the Saints. And he's into the end zone. A fumble return and a safe touchdown. So problems here on special teams and it results in the scoop and the score. They talk all the time on special teams about keeping your head on a swivel, trying to see the whole field. Hard to do when things are going that fast, bodies all over the place. You're just trying to find the right guy to align yourself with. On that play, wow. back out there at the line ready for their next drive they're close close game but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two no i would agree with that totally i would guess it in the locker room they talked about cleaning up some of the errors but overall i think they wanted to be positive with them guys we're right there just not playing as well as we need to let's pick it up and we still have a chance to win this game yeah they do we'll see if they can pick it up one play has them up past the 40 already and another first and ten A shotgun snap for Watson. And that going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long. And they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Something to watch here in week one of the season, tackling. Because you and I both know that in the preseason, a lot of these guys don't play a whole lot. Plus, the intensity and the speed really ratchets up on opening week. A running play on first down, and it turns into a fight just to get back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. And Brandon, every running back wants to use their speed in order to get out in front of things. Sometimes you just have to be patient, let blocks develop on that play. That he rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Demario Davis. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Shotgun now for Breeze. And that'll be incomplete. Jonathan Joseph there on the coverage. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Breeze now. And that is incomplete. Maybe a little over anxious in the pocket there. He just didn't look comfortable on that throw. No, he didn't because it wasn't his normal fluid delivery. And I think you might have had it right. Wasn't really confident with what he saw downfield and almost felt like he wanted to pull that one back. And a 
look now at Lamar Miller. He's had a good performance, moved the ball effectively on the ground. Of course, he has the one touchdown. And when you're able to move it as effectively as you've described, that leads to finding a way into the end zone, and now he's just trying to do it for a second time. And of course, with that comes additional yardage. Yeah, looking for additional yardage, and again, that second score here in the third quarter. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. They'll run it again with Miller. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes, if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. Now Watson. And the throw there going to be incomplete. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. So certainly an interesting call there to go for it. And the Saints are going to get it back and in great shape. Well, they've got the slim deficit, decided to go for it, hoping to keep the football score and erase that deficit. But, boy, deep in their own territory like right that? Let's just say that with that call, me and the head coach will agree to disagree. All right? But he knew he wanted to be aggressive there, as you pointed out. So I guarantee he told his defensive coordinator, have you guys up and ready. We're going to go for it here. If we don't get it, just make sure they're ready to go out there and bail us out. It's a 10-yard gain there to set him up first and goal. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. From three yards out, and the Saints able to stretch that lead out further. Great field position has to be one of the best friends an offense can have. When you don't have very far to go, you should cash it in with points. Lutz good on the extra point, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. And we focus on Lamar Miller as he heads back out there and gets set to go again on offense. We've seen him be good so far. He's hoping to continue that trend here in quarter number three. And typically when you see guys running it this well, they see the game in slow motion, don't they? They see the cuts happen. They see the blocks happen. They feel really good about their vision. And then they use their legs to find that open space. And he's had some good help up front to boot. Sometimes it's designed, and sometimes you just have to know when to leave the pocket and move and make something happen. Now on that play, he was able to get on the run and was still accurate throwing the football. And now the throw going to Fuller, and he's got it. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. Not only have they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely. Great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? Out to his left. He's going to look deep in zone for Hopkins. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. To throw is Watson. To throw again. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. Sliding out of the pocket. He finds his target, Fuller. And down he goes, taking it inside the ten, just shy of the five at the six. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. In 2018, Deshaun Watson had five fourth-quarter comebacks. Only Drew Brees of the Saints had more with six. They'll run with Miller, and he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Lamar Miller 
Already his second touchdown here in this opening weekend. As they are now just an extra point away from making this a three-point game. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. He's having a nice little game. Maybe already has an eye on that third touchdown. And how about what our producer, Christian McLeod, likes to say when they've scored touchdowns like this? He's put a tent up in touchdown city. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the side. Now Brees lost the football. And the Texans scoop it. And nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. And they will bring this one back. A fumble return for a Texans touchdown. And a big turning point here in the second half, Charles, after that play. All you're trying to do is change momentum, flip things around for your team. You're just trying to take the ball away. How about when you take it away and score? That really changes things. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And let's just say they're going to be looking to start over on this drive. A few moments ago, they were in the exact situation, but their first play led to a fumble that was returned for six. Yeah, you definitely have to have a short memory to play in the NFL. you got to remember what you did wrong so you don't repeat it. But you can't dwell on it because then you will repeat it. And that's what you don't want to do. And he'll let it fly in the direction again. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. I remember a coach telling me a long time ago the difference between playing corner and safety in the NFL. Corner is like the Autobahn. Everybody just flying by, and these corners have been really busy in this game, although they got it done on the last play. On the last play, yes. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. <laughs> On plays like this, when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is a quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. And now out comes Houston. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs, keep possession of the football. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and 10. Watson now to throw. Oh, incomplete, nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. Critical play in this football game, because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. It has to be a little frustrating for them, because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, it really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. The Saints offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with a game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Looking to throw again on second down. Breeze. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Breeze now on first down. Over the middle, it's Jared Cook. 
And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 14 yards is the pickup. First down, New Orleans. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 43. Now Breeze looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it that time to 10 again. And now it's second down. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Now Breeze. That'll be complete to Cook. They'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. Here we go, third and one. Gun check time on both sides. And that's caught by Smith. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. We've got a one-score game with inside of two minutes remaining. So it's Saints football as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Toss play, Camara able to fight through one tackle. Still on his feet. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. Missed tackles may doom this team. I just had a bad flashback. That's why I'm sitting up here with you right now. You've got to tackle him inbounds. You've got to wrap him up. Back to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. He's back to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. Now Breeze. That is caught inside the five. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. A 16-yard touchdown. And once again, the Saints are back out in front. Lux with the extra point. Wow. I know it's a never-say-never never situation, but to me, that looks like that's the one that's going to finish them off. The score that puts them in front here late, but not, you got to rally your kick team, don't you, and say the last thing we need is a big return. And what happens is guys get over-eager, get out of their lane because they're so excited they want to make the last tackle. <laughs> you mess up, could come back at you a long way. Watson of the Texans now. Down 31-28. A minute four on the clock. This is only week one of the season, folks. Get strapped in as they come up here first and ten. The hookup on the right side to Hopkins. And he's going to be ripped down by the face mask at the end of this. And that's going to add 15 more onto the end of this thing. Tack on 15 more for the face mask, and that becomes a huge play. Big pass gets caught on you. You're doing everything possible to get him on the ground, and sometimes you end up grabbing the face mask. After the penalty, it's Miller. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. This is Miller. He takes it across for the touchdown, and they've taken the lead late in the final minute of the fourth. Wow. Wow. It's how many practices we watched over time where the offense works on scoring late in the game and finding a way to win, as we just saw there. Just saw it right there. Now can they preserve that advantage that they just got? Fairbairn good with the extra point. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. That's fielded in the end zone. And with time a factor here late, he'll just take a knee and they'll put it out to the 25. Now all the focus shifts over to the Saints. Trailing by four, 47 seconds remaining. They've surrendered a double-digit lead, but can rescue themselves late as they come up on first down. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. And Matthews over the middle with the ground. And he fumbled it. It's on the ground. And the Texans scoop it. And the possession is theirs at their own 43-yard line. Yeah. <laughs> 
So we've got a challenge. Our referee's going to take another look on the tablet. He's going to be watching to see if the knee was down prior to the ball coming out. Oh, I love what you just said there. You nailed it because if the ball's shifting or moving before the knee or any other part of the body hits the ground, then that will be considered a fumble. This challenge was initiated by the guys in New York taking a look at the play. Less than two minutes to go. Yeah, I'm sure the coach wanted to challenge it, so he's probably going to send the New York office a holiday card. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 14 seconds to go in the game. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll look to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Back to throw. Caught on the left side by Ginn. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. The Saints on third down. They've hit four of seven. This time they face a third and two. He'll look to throw. Now a desperation. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked up by Brianne Body Calhoun. So Houston going to come away here with the victory. And partner, I must say, good to see you again. Been too long. And it's good to have football back, isn't it? Didn't you see me in preseason? Weren't we together in preseason? Yeah, but preseason, you know, it's preseason. This is week one. Oh, you're trying to say real football. Yeah, real football. Not preseason football, yeah. where we shake down the rosters and figure out who's going to play, and maybe the starters don't play as much. Now it's the front line guys from the first whistle. Yeah, I tuned you out in the preseason, <laughs> and now I'm listening to you. So for Houston, hey, you get a win, you get it on the road. You can't ask for much more than that to start the year. And they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for the Saints, they obviously fall to 0-1 with the defeat. And they'll look to regroup next week as they head to L.A. to take on the Rams. And for